without question, we are happy to get a win, a convincing win in the second half on a day like this when uh, there's so much greatness here with that 87 team. That's something we've looked forward to. I think the players, as I, as I said to them, this is something they'll look back on, uh, having a chance to meet those guys and, and uh, have them here and know they're behind the bench. That's something they'll look back on, and it'll be a pretty cool thing for them down the road. But uh, for the task at hand, uh, it was a big deal to the Hoosier Nation that, that they were here, and we certainly wanted to do our part. And, and I thought, especially in the second half, we did. We got a lot of good basketball. Uh, we did not have a 40-minute game, that's obvious, but uh, we, had, we had some stretches in the first half that were good. We had some stretches that were, were not up to par or at the standard they needed to be. But in the second half, it's hard to find much fault with that. And uh, a great start uh, defensively, and uh, it just carried on. We had 59 deflections in the second half, which is, we had 80 for the game, which is just, again, just blown away by their defensive effort. I want to get a little more blown away in the first half, though. I think that's going to be important. But, but uh, as we move <coughs> forward, that we continue to grow into understanding how important a 40-minute game is. And, and maybe this is where, because we haven't had success as a group uh, over a period of time that we just don't understand uh, how it has to be possession by possession. And, and we're going to keep preaching it and keep showing it on film uh, more and more so that we understand it. But they certainly show what they're capable of. And uh, there was a sense of urgency in that second half that just permeated throughout the entire building. Our fans were great and uh, really excited about the way uh, that we played. And uh, I thought the, the key guys in this game, it was really good that, that Derek and Dan, I thought, Will, they gave us a really good spark to start the second half. But the consistency of Cody and the consistency of Verdell were, were really, really big today. And, and this, this is one of the best games that, that I've ever been a part of, of the process with Verdell Jones in on both ends of the court. And he was solid in the first half, not, not as good as he needed to be, but, but uh, though he had a real presence in that second half on both ends. And Cody just continues to to get better. And he continues to show that there's a lot of room for improvement on him as well, as there is our whole team. So we knew we were playing a dangerous team. We knew we were playing a team that shoots the three really well. We let them get comfortable. And in the second half, we, we took that comfort away. The guys said that you didn't really need to say anything to them at halftime, that they kind of felt that they needed to pick it up. I'm sure that's true. Uh, the, coaches, the, the coaches handled communication. I just handled personnel. And there was really, I had no interest in, in uh, uh, getting my blood pressure up at halftime because we were in a situation where we got to win the game. So uh, let's figure out what we need to do strategically. Let's figure out what we want to run X and O wise, but let's get the right personnel on the court right now. And that was where my mind was. Coaches, coaches had a little communication. What made you decide on that personnel, obviously going with Danny Moore to... I want to change things up because I thought it needed to be. We needed more of a defensive mindset. And, and, and that's not to say that the guys that we didn't start didn't have it, but, 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 it but, but the energy level, the synergy wasn't where it needed to be. I mean, it wasn't, uh, it was just a feel. And it worked out. And we could have easily backfired, but it worked out. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Just what you get from, uh, from Daniel Moore, he came in and really sparked you. Oh, he'd career high 10 deflections. That's a big deal. I mean, that's a really big deal. Just like Jordan last week getting 15 in the Butler game. You know, when you're getting that kind of presence from your guards, and they're active like that. And, and uh, the, the, the biggest point to me, we took Thursday off coming into Friday's practice, was increasing our activity on the ball defensively. And I can see in the first half that, that as good as it had been the last two days, it wasn't happening that way. And so in the second half, I, I wasn't going to ask. I mean, it was just going to it was just going to have to be better. And, and uh, they responded. And Danny Moore keyed it because he got up on the ball and pressured the ball full court. And uh, was extremely aggressive. And, um, and really pleased with, with how he ran the team. He, he played under control, but at the same time, he played very fast, which is what we needed. And uh, he, he sparked with a capital S. There's no doubt about that to start the second half for him. How much does it help that, that you could use the bench as a motivator a little bit more because you have better depth now than you do? Well, you've seen over the past three years what happens when you can't. I mean, it's as simple as that. It sounds, I shouldn't say it's as simple as that. It's not simple. Because, because, because but you have to have, you have to have talent, you have to have, uh, there has to be an understanding that, that when you're not up to par, somebody else is going to get that opportunity. And we all know sitting in here, if we've covered this program, that we haven't been able to do that. And, and, and you can't truly build your program without depth and consistency of depth and having guys that, 
understand that if it's not if they're not bringing everything that they possibly have that they're going to watch for a while and that's just the way that it is and i hope we never ever run into that situation again because it, it's made the last three years as difficult uh of in-game uh, adjustments and strategies is is anything because no matter what you did there would there would be a huge talent gap if, if you substituted too much compared to what was in and compared to what you were going against but, but I don't think like that anymore. What's it say for Danny Moore that he continues to give you that spark to keep playing that role for you, even as you you <coughs> more and more talent? Well, it says uh, that he's a senior that, that really gets it because he hasn't played as much the last couple games. And, and, and again, he's got a maturity now that, that he gets it, even with the other night. I mean, it's, he's, he's as happy as anybody in the locker room, and he continues to come back and practice. And that's – I've used this line before, and I don't use it with them as much because it becomes a – it becomes really the way your program should be run, but it's the old Scott Skiles uh, statement of play on demand. And everybody in your program, everybody on your team has got to be able to come in and contribute at the point they're asked. And we're not a big uh, set rotation team. There's no question I subbed uh, too much in the first half and, and because I wanted to, I, I, but it was a mistake because I thought I would do a better job of, of that by keeping the energy up. And, and I didn't let us get enough flow, maybe. And, and, but again, I, I blame myself, but at the same time, we, we didn't have enough consistency in that first half. But it says a lot about him as an individual, that he can continue to come in and, and uh, go at it. And, and even though he hasn't played a lot, he just picks up right from where he left off. Tom, uh, Cody was one for five from the field to start, made his last six shots, four blocks, four steals, pretty complete game. Cody's no different than anybody else. He's, he's always, there, there's an extra gear in him. And, and it's our job uh, to help pull that out when, when, when it's not naturally there. And, and uh, he does an outstanding job. I don't like taking him off the floor. You know, we certainly like to keep his minutes in a certain area, but, but uh, it doesn't always work out that way. Somebody's went off this one. Um, but, um, he can he can improve leaps and bounds, and he is, he really is. And and uh, uh, but what he's doing and again, he led us in deflections with 15. That's pretty strong. He just continues to to uh, figure things out. He continues to become more aggressive as the game goes on, and he's like everybody else. He he feeds off sparks from other people on the team as well. And I think that happened a little bit in the second half. I think Derek did a really good job in the second half. He he hit a big shot. That's why I consider him one of our seven starters. Did you hear the crowd chanting for Pritchard, and what does it mean to you that the crowd seems to be just embracing the seniors so much? Well, I think it says that we got a lot of smart fans. I think it, 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 it said this to the 87 team today when we had a chance to see them. No one signed up, obviously, for what happened four seasons ago, but the fact that the former players continue to, to come back here, be a part of this, I think it, it showed the fans that, hey, the, the program is big. This program is really big. We, we may be going through a tough situation, but the, the players love the program. It's always been about how, how they feel about the program based on the tradition that's been here. I think our fans are doing that with the, with the seniors. They know that maybe a couple of them aren't playing as many minutes as they've played in the past, but they appreciate hard work. They appreciate contributions. They appreciate effort. They appreciate what these kids have been through because they've been through it with them. You know, we wouldn't have it, it, we wouldn't have the attendance. I mean, it's just it's just still mind-boggling how passionate this fan base is and how they've never left it. And uh, I think it says a lot about the fans. And, and I I did hear it, and and I got to believe somewhere in his heart of hearts, he's really appreciative of that. What do you think it, it meant for your team to be able to meet the '87 team, and and what do you think they can learn going forward, especially into a game like Kentucky from the '87? Sure. Team? Well. Uh, they had some good points. The only guy they really didn't get to meet, he was there, was Keith Smart because of the, the lockout rules, which, which really was too bad. Because I think they're still under those same rules. But uh, those guys just really talked about family. What we're going to do this week, there is some of the ones of you that, that interviewed those guys, there were some phenomenal things written about that team. And one that we said in front of everybody was when Steve Alford talked about how it was fitting that Keith Smart hit that shot. Be, and I'm paraphrasing here, but because it was basically his turn. And, and Steve had made a game when he played. Daryl had made a game when he played. Dean had made a game when he played. There was probably somebody else. But it was almost like it was Keith's turn. That's what it's all about. That was a team. 
I mean, it really was. I mean, a lot of great teams in Indiana. But when you look back at it, it wasn't a team of lottery picks. It wasn't a team of guys that had illustrious, long NBA careers. It was a group of tough guys that understood exactly what they were supposed to do. I think another thing that will really help us down the road, is, I don't remember who wrote this, but where Dean and Keith came to the program and they asked what they could do to help, not the other way around. And obviously that's harder in this day and age, but you've got to continue to, to preach that. So I think the lessons from a team like that will, will help these guys down the road. I don't know if it's just helping us get ready for Kentucky. I don't know if we could use Dean Garrett against <laughs> Anthony Davis. I mean, I mean seriously, but, but uh, I think, again, down the road for these guys, having that 87 team back here will really be something they'll cherish at their time at Indiana. Getting back to Cody really quick, he's gotten a couple chances last couple of games outside the paint, jump hooks, that kind of thing. Are you trying to make it a focus on extending him, like getting him chances to score? <coughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons that, that I hope he chose Indiana, because we're going to try to make him as complete as he can possibly be. And it's coming. I mean, I, what what... Uh, what we see in practice is not always what comes to the games, but, he, but, but again, you don't, you don't rush greatness. You don't rush a guy into something that maybe he's not as comfortable with yet, and I think you'll see him continue to propel as the season goes on as, as he's comfortable with it. And, and uh, I have no complaints with what he's doing. We just continue to push and try to develop him on a daily basis just like we do everybody else, and he's a very willing participant into getting better. The bandage on his arm, it's kind of been on and off. I mean, what's the... I think he's got it in practice. Coach, it's uh, nothing serious. Uh, you spoke about at the Big Ten media day how the offense at the time was way behind the defense. Uh, where would you say the offense is now? Well, I would say our offense is a lot better when our defense is cooking and when our defense is aggressive. I think that's that's still where we're at. Um, it's a good question. It's, it's one I probably don't give enough thought to. Uh, I know we're spending more time on our execution and uh, some of that gets better but again th th this team has got to be about the, the, the turnovers it creates, the havoc it causes on the ball. We've got to become a better rebounding team. What do we end up? We're getting out rebounded at half. So ended up being tied. You know, that, that's not, it's not where it needs to be so I'm a little more locked, probably a little more locked into that than maybe comparing both but I do think we're getting better offensively. You know, we've got Pretty instinctive players. We've got a good smorgasbord of guys that can shoot and drive. We've got to get more penetration. So I think that would be an area that, that we need to improve upon. But right now, the focus you know, with, with these games coming up, especially Saturday, is how are we going to guard? And what kind of defense are we going to have? Is this team where you want it to be going into the week? Oh, I never think like that. I never can do that. The, the only thing I do is look and, and compare statistics sometimes. You know, find me a coach that's satisfied, and find me a coach out that's a coach I want to schedule. You know, so I don't, I don't look at it like that. Anything else for coach? All right, thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks.